In this video, I'm going to do a demo in which I boot the Pintos operating system natively on my laptop. The background is that this summer, I've been the instructor for Computer Science 162, which is the operating systems class at UC Berkeley. And in that class, we use the Pintos operating system for the projects that we give our students. But I feel that as a student working on the projects and debugging your code, it's all too easy to lose sight of the fact that you're building an operating system that can run on commodity hardware. And even if you do keep this in mind, and you look online, for example, to find some resources to uh, actually run the operating system you built on, say, your laptop, you'll find that it takes some effort to actually put all the pieces together and actually run the operating system on real hardware. So as a result, I feel that a lot of students spend a bunch of time in the class working on their Pintos projects, but never actually see Pintos run on a real computer. So that's why I'm making this video, to show you what it looks like to run Pintos on a real computer. This is the laptop that I'm going to use to boot Pintos and run it natively. There is nothing special about this laptop. It's actually an old laptop that I got in, I think, 2009, and that I used for about six years after that. Originally, the laptop ran Windows. Later on, I set up dual boot with Ubuntu on it. And today, we're going to run Pintos on it. Okay, so I have Pintos installed on this USB drive here. Uh, we're going to run Pintos on the laptop by booting off of this USB drive. I didn't want to install Pintos directly on the hard drive because I wanted to keep whatever was on the hard drive currently. Uh, so first, let me plug in this USB drive into the laptop. And on this laptop, booting Pintos off of the USB drive is now as simple as just turning it on. On some laptops, you might have to uh, open up a menu right when the laptop turns on and select the drive you want to boot from. But on this laptop, it's just as simple as turning it on. So let's go ahead and do that. So the dots going across the screen, that's the Pintos bootloader. Okay, that's the first thing that gets loaded off of the USB drive and it's responsible for loading the rest of the Pintos kernel into memory. Okay, now the remaining lines that got printed out after that, that's the Pintos kernel booting and printing things out as it booted. Okay, you can see it scanned the USB bus. Just search for the drive that we just plugged in. And on there it found the Pintos OS kernel and the Pintos file system. And then it can use that file system now and that allows it to finish booting. Okay, after it finished booting, it executed the program slash bin slash shell on the file system. And keep in mind that the bottom line of the operating system is just to run user programs. Okay, and the shell is just a special user program, right? It's just a user program that accepts input from the user and uses that input to start other programs. Okay, so um, the shell has started. Uh, the shell program actually ships with the Pintos source code. It's bundled in there. Uh, this is a modified version uh, that performs a primitive form of path resolution. So we can't implement path resolution just like it's done in, say, Linux, because uh, we don't have support for environment variables in Pinto, so we can't have a path variable, really. But what we can do is that we can hard code a directory, in this case, slash bin, to be the path. So when you invoke a program, the shell will first check in the current directory for that executable. And if it can't find it there, then it'll look in slash bin. Okay, and that's how we're gonna do path resolution. So now I can go ahead and actually run a program. Okay, for example, I can run the program um, ls. Um, sorry, yeah, ls. And that actually found the program is slash bin slash ls. The line slash bin slash ls colon exit of zero. That's the line that you added in user programs that gets printed out whenever a process terminates. The line underneath that, the ls in quotes colon exit code zero, uh, that's printed out by the shell. So after it calls exec, after it issues an exec system call to spawn the new process, it calls wait. It issues a wait system call in order to wait for the process to finish, and it gets the exit code that way. And once wait returns, it prints out the exit code, and that's what the final line is. So here, the only directory is bin. Okay, we're currently in the root directory, so slash bin is the only directory in here. Okay, and we can look at what's inside bin. Okay, so I can cd into bin because you implemented 
current working directory in the file systems project. And then we can run ls. And here we can see that I've actually preloaded the file system with some utility programs so that we can do some interesting things in here. Okay, so let's go back out. You can see some utility programs like makedir, ls, pwd, rm. Um, so back in the root directory, I can create a directory called docs. Okay, I can go inside this directory. And now I can create and write to files. So unfortunately, I couldn't find any text editor for Pintos. But we can write our own programs to issue system calls to create files and write to them. And that's exactly what I've done. Okay, so I can, uh, so I wrote a program called fcreate that will allow us to create a file, say, uh, say uh, file.txt. And once we have that file, there's another program, okay, called fappend that we can use to append new data onto the file followed by a new line. Okay, so I can do file.txt to specify the file, then I can type up some data. Okay, and once I've done this, okay, now when I cap the file, I'll see the contents that I put in there. Okay, there are other utilities too, like for example, there's hex dump. Okay, I can hex dump the file. Okay, and that'll print out the individual bytes in the file. And you can see the last new line there that was appended by the uh, f append program to the very end. And that's why we have two dots showing up in the version that hex dump prints because the new line is the second dot. Okay, and we can use hex dump to not just look at human readable files, but also binary files. So we can, so, uh, so just for fun, we can hex dump an executable file, it's like slash bin slash ls. And we can see all the bytes that make up that executable file. Okay, now there's one last thing I want to mention here. Okay, so in the IO lecture, I gave the Pintos speaker driver as an example of using port mapped IO. Okay, that's the in and out instructions in x86 that you can use to interact with certain hardware. And of course, those are privileged instructions, so we can't actually use those instructions from a user program directly. But what we can do is we can extend Pintos with a new system call. And then inside that system call handler, we can have Pintos interface with the speaker using the speaker drivers functions. Okay, and that's exactly what I've done here. Okay, there's a new system call called tone that plays a tone at a specified frequency for a specified duration. And that's actually pretty simple to write because the Pintos speaker driver is already there. It's just a matter of calling into the driver in the system call handler. And now once we have this tone system call, we can write user programs that make sounds using the speaker and can even play music. So inside slash bin, okay, so, so to go back to the root directory, um, then we can do ls bin. Yeah, we can see that there's a program called railroad. Okay, and we can go ahead and run it and see what music played through this Pinto speaker driver looks like. So um, once we're all done with using Pintos and we want to shut down the system, we have to be careful not to just abruptly turn it off uh, because we have a buffer cache. So if we did that, the file system might be left in an inconsistent state. Instead, we want to turn it off properly. And we can do that by issuing the halt system call, okay? or we could just exit from the shell. And once that process terminates, the kernel would know to shut down since that's the first process. Uh, but there's, uh, so to shut down the kernel, um, we, there's a program called halt. And when we run it, it'll issue a halt system call. And in response to that, as the kernel shuts down, it'll go, it'll flush the buffer cache so our file system remains consistent. And then it'll go and print out some interesting statistics for us to look at. 
for example, how many timer ticks were spent in the kernel mode versus user mode versus how many were idle, uh, how many reads and writes were made to the file system, and so on. Okay, and now that Pintos has shut down, we can now safely press the power button to turn the computer off. Okay, so that's the end of the demo. If you want to try any of this out for yourself, uh, in the description below, there's a link to the Pintos fun exercise that I wrote and gave to our students that gives instructions on how to reproduce what I did in this demo. So otherwise, that's it. Thanks for watching.